Good morning. I'm going to get started here in just a minute. If you are watching live, uh, please say hello and let us know where you're watching from. And also, it'd be great uh, to let me know if it's live on YouTube and on Facebook. <clears throat> Hi, Pam. I see you're on YouTube. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me get started here. Hi there. Hello. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to my Missouri studio here at our cabin in the Ozarks. Uh, so glad to be with you today. It's nice outside this morning, but we're supposed to get quite a bit of rain this evening, so I was glad I had planned this for Thursday and the weather's not going to start um, with the rain until later on. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so I have uh, just a lot to share with you today, and um, I know most of you, hopefully you're on my email list where you get the information about what's new with Stampin' Up, and we're going to be talking about that first. I'm going to do some sharing of some cards uh, that were sent to me or Jackie in the mail. I'm going to show you that, and then we're going to make a card, okay? So let me switch to my desktop, and we will get started. Okay, first of all, I wanted to announce again, I posted this on my um, hey, Lori. Oh, it's snowing. I posted this on my Facebook page yesterday, but I wanted to say again, I had a mystery host party at the very end of celebration. And Lori, who's here this morning, got mystery host rewards. So Lori, I've got that order for you and I'll be sending that when it comes in. And Connie Cornelio and Susan Store Johan, I'm hope Johan, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, each one a host set that I will be sending them in the mail. So congratulations to them. <clears throat> now, let me share some cards that Jackie got for his birthday and then another one that I have that I don't think I have shared. You know how we are inspired by each other's work. And when we see a card, it just might spark some interest into what we would like to make. So that's why I like to show you these beautiful handmade creations that I received. Now, first, I'm going to show you the card that I made for Jackie, and I may have shown it in a previous uh, live. Hi, Diane, sunny Florida. Yeah. Okay, this I made his birthday card. It's a fun fold. And I used the um, Ready to Ride designer series paper, you know, the one with the motorcycle, and the, let me get it, the Desert Details stamp set okay so you can see i use the border here top and bottom there this happy birthday is from another stamp set i can't think off the top of my head oh it's this one celebrate with tags okay see that happy birthday it was big and bold to use on the front of that card and i stamped it in basic black on the basic gray and it worked just fine and then I used one of these dies, this really intricate, nice die for the closure there. And I did that out of foil. OK, I'll probably be posting that on my blog at some point with the directions or just the, you know, the ingredients in the recipe. So next, I'm going to show you a card sent by one of my team members, Linda, to Jackie for his birthday. I mean, isn't this cool? Look how she created this vest, fishing vest. And I have to read you the little, some of the little note because she's told me where about a little bit behind this card. I mean, look at it. Isn't that awesome? The pockets and it's got all the lures inside. Look, these are, oh, let me get over, rainbow trout that we catch here at Roaring River and a fly rod. It was perfect for him. I just love it. And so... Here, look, she stamped the fishing creel and the hat on the outside of the envelope. Love that. 
And then on the inside, she sent a note, and I want to tell you about some of these images, what she said, um, <clears throat> that she loves making this card for the fishermen that go to her church. Isn't it, Pam? Yes, I love it. Um, so she knew that Jackie liked fishing, so she thought of this card. And she pulled out some old Stampin' Up! stamps from the early 90s, y'all, the early 90s to make this card. And uh, some are from a different stamp company, but she just can't part with some of her stamps. And, and look what a great card that is. You know how you have a stamp set and some you think, okay, I can either let someone have this or sell it or something. But then there are those sets that you just have to keep forever. Well, this is was for her and just perfect for Jackie. So just wanted to share that with you. And then here's another one. <clears throat> I'm going to set these aside here. This one is from my, one of my team members too, Connie. You do a great job of being a great guy. And this paper is from the He's the Man Suite. Look, she cut out the little camper. I keep moving over, sorry. Cut out the little camper there. And she's got some Wink of Stella on the tree. She, she told me once, she said, I think I use Wink of Stella on almost every card. And then look, look at the different designer papers in here and how that really makes that special. And it's the paper, y'all. Our paper is fabulous. Do you agree? I mean, it's fabulous. And sometimes, look, she put her little stamp on the back and the date. I love it. So cute. And then for the envelope, she lined the flap there with some of that same designer paper. Anyway, love it. I just love it. I'm going to have to, I love this uh, fold too. It's a great fold. Love it. Okay. And here's another one she did. And I got this probably back in the fall. I don't think I've ever shared it. And I don't even know what this is from, that stamp set. But look at those ovals cut like that. And it's got a belly band. And I haven't recreated this card yet, but I'm going to. She always puts a little note inside there. Look at that. Another way to show off. Look, that's three of the designer papers. Remember this harvest paper that was in the uh, mini, the holiday mini? Isn't that pretty? I'm going to have to do that. I just love it. So thanks, Connie. Thanks, Linda. And all of you that send me cards, I love to share them and um, love to get ideas from them. Okay. So pretty. <coughs> okay. Now let's talk about the new online exclusives. Okay. So Stampin' Up! has come up with this online exclusive section of our uh, online store. And in there, there are going to be products added periodically that are not tied to any publication. And the great thing about that is that we don't have to say, oh, this is not gonna be available after this time. These are going to be up there. They may sell out, but they'll let us know if it's getting close or if it sells out. But it's like in there with our kit collection and some of our branded merchandise, things that you can only find online. And there are some great, great items in there and they, brought back some returning uh, favorites to Oh, I just dropped something, but don't let that scare you. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> this bundle, Irresistible Blooms, well, actually it's a suite, is what I'm going to be using today. And it is beautiful. The, I'm going to show you the paper here in just a minute. It is beautiful. And as a demonstrator, we were able to pre-order a few of the products before they went live to everyone on March 1st, which was yesterday. So I got this suite and there's some designer paper, some folders, an alphabet stamp set. I have all that. You'll, you'll be seeing it and I'm going to show some of it today. Okay. So anyway, and another thing that I was super excited about is these two punches are available. I know the glare is bad. The one and three quarter inch and the two inch punch are again available on the in the online exclusives. Love it. Who loves punches, right? <laughs> Aren't they great when you're you're um, 
trying to do a quick card. I mean, I just love them. Okay, so anyway, that's that. Be sure if you haven't checked it out, the online exclusives in the online store, be sure you go there and look at what's available. I've ordered some more things that I'll be sharing with you next week and um, making some projects. So you can look forward to that. Okay, now. Let me show you the actual bundle. Irresistible Blooms. Okay, so yes, more flowers, but you know what? That's what we love is flowers. And when I saw this, I thought what drew my eye to this stamp set was the this beautiful font. Okay, I love this. And it's a mixture of script and manuscript, but it's got this thick look with these little scrollies. See, I love that. And... When I saw these flowers and then I saw the paper, the designer paper and how it was used, it just, the, certain techniques just screamed at me, okay? Like this is what this is going to be great for. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be showing you as we use this stamp set, okay? And we always have to love a good splatter, right? So there we have that in that set. And let me show you the dies. You have the leaves to cut out the leaves. I'm using, I have been using this quite a bit, so I have them in my little magnet bowl. But you have a floral shape for the large and smaller flower, which in the designer paper, there are also flowers that you can cut out with these dies. You have these leaves here, okay? Then you have little separate leaves, okay, that are intricate and that you can cut and they don't correspond to one of the stamps, okay? Uh, let's see what else is there. Oh, this little beady leaf here. It's just, just you, the possibilities are endless, really. So I just loved it for spring. I think it would make beautiful Easter cards, okay? And um, so anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna work with this today. I'm gonna put this over here before I, forget what I'm using. And this one, I'll show you a card that I made with this is really fine. Okay. It's an intricate border piece and you're going to love it. Okay. All right. So there, oops, don't lose the dies, Lisa. There's the stamp set. Now let's look at the paper. It's done in six by six. Okay. And it's called Hello Irresistible, which I think they rightly named this bundle and suite because it is irresistible. Okay, the colors are beautiful, and we're going to talk a little bit about the colors too. See these flowers? These are the ones you can cut out with the dies. And so what does that bring to mind when you see that? I know when I first looked at it, I thought white embossed flowers with embossed resist technique. It's immediately what I thought. I mean, but the thing is, is that you don't even have to do that. You could just cut out these flowers and use them on your cards. Okay. So there's one and we've got, let me read you the colors here. It's Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, which you'll see that, Lost Lagoon, Petal Pink, Pretty Peacock, and Soft Sea Foam. Now there are two colors in there that we've heard in the past. Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. And it just so happens that I saved my ink pads. They're old in colors that are going to return. So what that tells us is we're probably going to see some new colors and some returning colors in our Stampin' Up! color lineup. Okay, so these both, both of these colors are used in this paper, but you don't have to have these to use the paper. OK, so I'll, and I'll tell you some colors that you can use now, like Evening Evergreen would work and Pool Party works. Anything that has a bluish green tint to it is fine. OK, I just wanted to share that about the new colors coming or the returning colors coming. OK, so here we have this. And then the back side is just a crosshatch looking with that splatter or marbled look. I love these border prints. This looks, again, it looks embossed to me, okay? And I love that, like, for a card front. And I'm using this side today on the card, okay? Here's more leaves done in the white with the Lost Lagoon and Seafoam. 
and then on the back here's another little cross hatch pretty peacock lost lagoon okay but you can see some of our other colors are gonna i mean even soft succulent looks good with that okay uh even evergreen okay you see that okay it'll work okay oh here's the back of that i love how one side is a print and the other side is just an all over use with whatever stamp set you want Here's another. Now the dies for the leaves, cut out these leaves as well. And there's another little fun print on the back of that. Here's some with the daffodil and the lost lagoon kind of mixed together. All right, and the leaves are done. I think that's lost lagoon. And then those are splatter image on the back. Love this. This is, <coughs> excuse me just beautiful for a card front and just a sentiment okay you know sometimes we don't have to make it all the things you know we can make simple cards with a sweet sentiment that will be very much appreciated and i was talking to a friend of mine last night about how we really need to send or i say we i need to send out more cards if the lord puts something somebody on my heart i need to send them a card okay just think what that does when you receive a card, you know? So, okay, let's make that a goal, okay? All right, so this, another thing I have to say about this is I heard that someone used it, used it as an underwater scene, okay? Like it's under the sea. So you see how that could be used for that? And then here is the back with these dots that are much like the guy, that border guy that I showed you. See that? Okay. And then we have some more white leaves that are on the daffodil and moss lagoon. And there's the, the two colors again. Here's the soft sea foam. That's a very soft color. Would make a pretty background when you don't want to take away from your main image. Okay. And there's another soft sea foam in white. And then here... You've got your petal pink and your daffodil together with these flowers that can be cut with the um, dies. And there's a, some more of that color, but with that little cross hatch. Y'all don't know what all these prints are called. I just kind of give them my own name. <laughs> Look at this. I love this. This is that same print that I said somebody used as an underwater scene but it's done in white on these colors. I mean, totally different look. So pretty, all right? And there's the back of that one. And then one last, that image, that dot line image, and then the back. So when I saw the paper, the paper is what really did it for me. It's like, I gotta have that paper. And I thought, well, I've got the paper. I need to get the dies, I need to get the stamp set because I love the sentiments and I'm so glad I did. It's just beautiful. Okay, let's move on. Let me show you the card we're making today. This is it, okay? It's not difficult. It's just a combination of some elements that are, and I used one extra element, this border from the um, basic border dies. But, um, oh, y'all, it was just so fun to do. And you notice it's a different size. I wanted to make a squatty card. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. I wanted a chunky square card. Now, I will tell you, this is a four and a half by four and a half card. And when you're thinking, you're thinking right when it doesn't fit into our standard envelopes, you would have to make an envelope. Well, no, I wanted to get around that. So I want to show you what I did. Here's one of our standard em envelopes. It's just of a quarter of an inch too tall. Okay. So what I did is I put it in here and then I folded it down along the top and gave it a good crease. Okay. And then I give it a, gave it a burnish with my bone folder. Okay. And then I took a thin strip of designer paper and glued it over that fold, the original fold, the envelope where it would have folded down there for our four and a quarter by five and a half cards. Okay. So 
I don't have a problem with that, with doing that with my envelopes rather than making another envelope. OK, and so that's something you can try. It does have a little open spot on this side and this side, but I'm not going to worry about that. It'll be fine. OK, so that's that's how I solve the problem there. Now, if you want it to fit, you would cut everything down by a quarter of an inch. So instead of a four and a half inch square card, you would have a four and a quarter inch square card and then come down a quarter of an inch on everything. OK, so not hard to do, but this would work. You can make it work with our envelopes. OK, and I wanted to share that. OK, let's get started. Enough jabbering. Lisa. OK. All right. So now here it is. The base. It's a four and a half by nine square. Piece of cardstock. Petal pink. I scored it at four and a half and I full folded it and burnished it. And there's my square card. OK, so I'm going to take this off here. Now I will have these dimensions and stuff on my blog tomorrow so that you can uh, reference that if you want to recreate the card or you can copy it down now. Thanks, Sam. All right, so here, and do you know how hard it was for me to cover this up? Really hard, but I did it. So I wanted this. It's four and a half by four and a half, and it's covering the complete card front. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. So sometimes I like to cover the complete card front rather than leaving that, you know how we like to leave that little quarter inch or eight inch border. Sometimes it's like the designer paper, like let's get as much as we can on the card because it is just too beautiful. And look at me putting glue over these flowers. That's okay. All right. So there we go. So that's com completely covers the front of the card. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inside of the card. So what I did here is I cut a four and a quarter inch square of basic white, and then I had a scrap piece. And it doesn't matter how wide it is. You know, if you have a little thin piece, if you have a one inch piece, put it on the inside of your card. It makes gives it such a finished look. And so I wanted this a little smaller to have that petal pink border around the edge there. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And we'll set this base aside while we work with the rest of the card. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so there we have that. I'm going to put it right there. And next thing we're going to look as is at the um, the big chunk of the front of the card. OK, so let me tell you this story here. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, this is not Daffodil Delight, which is the color that's in the designer paper. The Daffodil Delight, when I tried it, was just too bright for what I wanted the card to look like. So I thought, I've got to use something else. I'm going to use some saffron, and I'm glad I did. I cut a three and three quarter inch square. OK, I've got this hooked together because I've already die cut this piece. And I cut this circle die right in the center out of this three and three quarter inch piece square. OK, so that cut out and I'll have to say it cut beautifully cut all the pieces out, everything popped out easily. This little divot right there was the only one I had to push out with my take your pick tool. OK, so that's going to go here. But I wanted uh, some white background. So I have this three and seven eighths inch square that will let me do this so you can see it's going to go right behind that. OK, and it has just a tiny border there, but we're going to do some stamping here. So I want to do that before I ever start gluing anything down. So let me take this three and seven eighths times three and seven eighths off here. Put this die back. And I know I want it to say thank you. Now, so what I'm going to do after I would die cut this piece, I would put it over top like that and get it you know, how I know I'm going to glue it down. 
and it doesn't really matter what top bottom is okay on this once you stamp you're going to know which is your top and bottom now my flower is going to go down here okay so i want my sentiment to be more toward the top and it's going to say thank you like that okay so i know i'm going to put a little pencil mark just to remind me and the rain has begun y'all all right just a little pencil mark that i can come back and erase later to know that i need to come up okay so it's a little higher than my stamp is going to be i just want to leave this corner down here which i know a circle doesn't have a corner but you know what i mean down here for my flower okay so let's move this aside let's get our stamp and we're going to stamp in petal pink and i'm going to test it first on a scrap piece looks good all right so I know that this needs to be about right there because of where that pencil mark is. So I'm going for it. I'm trying to center. Got it. Now, if it's not just right, now I'm going to let it dry. After it dries, I can erase that pencil mark. Okay. So let's see if we did okay. And yes, it's fine. I can turn this around to see if a fit would be better because of these little little dots here. You see what I'm doing? I'm turning turning it so that the majority of the what you call it sentiment is going to show. So let's see. I think I liked this one. Okay. All right. So I can go ahead and glue that down now. Let me get this ink out of the way. So y'all are really quiet. Y'all doing okay? <laughs> I know I am just jibber jabber today. I was just so excited about sharing again and being back live. I didn't get to do a lot. Okay, was it this the way? Okay, so okay, so there we have that with our sentiment. Okay, now we can set that aside and we're going to do some other things that we're going to add to this. First, I have a one by six strip of petal pink. And it's to cut my border, okay? So let me get my mini boss in here. And I have, oh, I didn't use the basic borders. You know what I used? I used the uh, scallop contours dies, you know, with the rectangles with the scallops from the annual catalog. Okay, so this is the scallop border from the scallop contours dies. And so I'm going to place that here. This pretty much goes all the way across. A six inch piece is just right. I'm going to get a piece of post-it tape and put that down. Okay, let's see. Okay, now, <coughs> here it is, excuse me y'all, my allergies, every time a cold front comes in, my allergies go crazy, and the thunder is starting. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to tear this off. Oops, I pressed a little, almost too hard. Sometimes this post-it tape is really sticky, so I'm going to be real gentle with it there. Let's move this out of the way. And here it is, the scallop contours dies. That's where that die came from, this one, okay? Y'all remember that one? 
It's a great set. I hope it doesn't retire. Okay, so now I have this big piece that is going to border here. So I always cut it larger than I need to, okay? I'm gonna take my paper snips and just snip it off here. Cut off the border. Okay, trash. All right, so now I line it up on the bottom here and I try to get, like I don't want half of a scallop here and a middle scallop there. Y'all know what I mean about that? It's like I try to get it as close to even and from the previous cards I've made, I could tell that I went like to the middle of this little scallop. I mean, not the scallop, but the dip, the little divot there and over here. So I line it up like that and try to make it look even. Okay. And then before I ever glue it, I take my paper snips, I'm looking at it again, and I'm going to slide it along the edge of the basic white and snip. And then I'm going to turn it around, hold it tight. And you could tape it if you wanted to, to cut it, but, or you could even glue it first, but I like to do this. Okay, so now I've got a, just the right size there, and I'm going to use a little bit of Where's my good glue? Is this it? I think so. Yeah. And I say good glue. I meant one that's cooperating this morning with the flow. You know what I mean? Okay. So now I don't want too much to show. So I kind of line it up with where it comes up. Okay. To the little divots. And then I'm going to put it over here. And that's going to work just right. See? Okay. I'm thinking, I think I can go ahead and put this on. So I've got a little bit up there at the top, more on the sides. It's just the way I designed the card. Um, and I'm going to, I always have to think, do I need to glue this now? <laughs> or do I need to wait? But we're going to glue it. And line it up on my grid sheet. And I don't want it overhanging the bottom. I'm trying to center it side to side, just eyeballing it and going for it. Hi, Rita from Guatemala. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Okay, so there we go. That's done. And I think I can go ahead and erase my little pencil mark now. Sometimes the ink kind of sets it in there. And, you know, you don't, I put it kind of dark when I made my mark. Oh, I see I'm frozen. Just hang in there with me. It's the weather. Okay, I think I'm back. Um, I made it kind of dark and the ink kind of sets it. But you just have to barely make a light little, little mark, okay, before you stamp. Okay, so that's ready now. So now I have a scrap uh, from petal pink for the flower and on this one I did decide to go ahead and emboss it because I just have I love embossing I don't do it hardly nearly as much as I used to this was the very first technique that got me hooked thank you Rita Maria thank you I appreciate that okay so I'm inking up with Versamark ink which is a clear watermark ink I don't have my essentials embossing kit with me. It's in Texas, you know, with the little brush and the tweezers and everything, but I'm gonna make this work here and then order me another one to keep here in Missouri. Okay, so there it is. It's a sticky ink. I've got some white embossing powder. Yes, uh, Rita, you can always watch the replay. Rita Maria, love that. Okay, so now that was a good clean. See how pretty that white, oops, y'all. Okay, y'all forgive me a minute. I'm gonna use my little handy vacuum and pick up that embossing powder. 
for my tomatoes. Okay. Sorry about that. It's like, oh, I missed. <laughs> okay. Now, got this. Once you stamp the Versamark, you, you need to go ahead and put the embossing powder on as soon as you can. But then like this, and you can see I could clean up a little bit and now I can emboss. So our heat tool has two high, a high and low setting. I like to use the high. And let it heat up a little bit. And I'm gonna emboss. And you can tell when it is ready because it gets more vibrant or darker and the powdery look goes away. Okay. It's good, I think. I don't want to overheat it, but I don't want any powder left. So I don't know that you can tell, but it's glossy, okay? Maybe, nah, I don't know. Oh, there we go. See how you can tell it's glossy. Okay, so then what I would do is I would take the large bloom, put this on, and die cut it. Okay, and I can feel that embossing powder everywhere. Hang on, hold the phone. I'm going to try to brush some of it off. It just, you know, it has a mind of its own. It's all over my desk. I think the little vacuum kind of spread it instead of helping. Okay. But, you know, it's kind of important when you make a mess like this so that you don't um, have it mess up what you're working on. Go ahead and clean it up. You'd be glad you did. Okay. So now I still feel it. Ugh. Okay. Let me go ahead and run it through. I may change that whole piece of grid sheet. Okay. Does anyone else use the grid sheets? I don't, I, I've tried to do it without, and sometimes I can, but especially when I'm doing a live, when I want to double check my measurements, it's like I gotta have the grid sheet. Ugh. Okay, so there's that, okay, and I'm going to put this aside, get this out of the way, and I am going to get this top sheet off, get all of that powder. I'll have to do some cleaning, major cleaning after I finish, but for now, this is going to help tremendously. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, Cindy, that's what I should have done is taken a, a one, an old sheet for embossing. Diane, you use them all the time. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't hardly do without them. All right. What was I doing? What was I doing? Okay. Here's my flower. <laughs> okay. So then I've done the next part. See how that's going to go right there and not interfere with my sentiment. I chose another pattern of that designer paper and I die cut some of the intricate leaves. Okay, I cut four of them out while I was cutting. Okay, so I, there, there are three of these leaves in the dies, but I cut two, two of each of these. One I used on the sample and I have those right here. Okay. So now we're going to start kind of putting it together. So with this flower, I knew that I wanted it to be popped up just a little bit. So I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to put them like that. And I'm leaving this kind of open there because the leaves are going to tuck underneath. Oh, I still feel that embossing powder. Cindy, I should have done what you said you do. I usually do that. Look, I even had this piece here that I was going to use. 
goodness. Okay. Let's take the papers off the dimensionals. And I'm going to put that about right there. Okay. And now I'm going to put the leaves in just behind. And I don't want them extending beyond the, the card front. Okay. Let's do this. So I want them pretty close together. But I want them to come off of the square. Okay. Oh, Cindy of Master Pro. Thank you, dear. But hey, I'm just like the rest of us. Try as I go. Just, you know, try different things. <laughs> All right. You're sweet, Cindy. Thank you. All right. Now, and I'm just using a little liquid glue toward the, the part that is going to be tucked beneath that bloom. Okay. <laughs> that powder is driving me crazy. All right. So now we have that. Now, you see we have white space right here. Okay. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's white there. It's a blank space that you need something. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I have some of this crinkled seam binding ribbon. It's in white, but I want it in petal pink. So I'm going to get my dark petal pink alcohol marker on my Stampin' Blends. And I want to tell y'all something while I'm thinking about it. We have petal pink ribbon and it's beautiful, but it was too bulky for what I wanted here. Okay, I wanted to tie a bow and I could have just tied a knot and put it there, but this really... I like using this kind of thicker ribbon like for tags where you double it over like that. It wasn't going to serve my purpose, but we do have petal pink ribbon that you could use, okay? But I always keep some of this white ribbon or something similar that's light colored that I can color over with my Stampin' Blends. So this is the dark. That's my brush tip, and I'm just going to brush it over. I do not use the tip of my pen because that would ruin it and I have found if I brush too hard when I'm coloring my ribbon it kind of messes up my tip so go easy okay go easy when you're doing this put a piece of scrap paper beneath and if you want it a little darker you can go back over it and it I find that it lightens up a bit you know when it dries I'm going to get all the way to the end here just in case. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit a minute. I'm going to put my marker away. And now I'm going to tie a bow. So I like to take two little bunny ears, two loops, cross them, and then tie. And then I make my loops smaller by adjusting. Okay. And I always, this is ribbon is about eight and a half inches long. And I always cut it longer than I think I need. Okay. All right. So let me see. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay. So I'm going to use a glue dot behind the knot of the ribbon. Push it down, pull it up, and then I'm going to put that right there. And then, then I can trim my ends. Okay. Cut in an angle, helps keep a little bit of the raveling at bay. Okay. Now, we have these in the suite, these loose frosted dots. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll have to, I'm admitting right now, these aren't my favorite things to use because it's like, I feel like they're trying to run away from me. But that's where this little guy comes in handy. 
Okay, so on this one, I want to use pink. We've got the daffodil, the peacock, and the, it's like flirty flamingo, but it's going to work for this. I wanted the pink. So there are three different sizes. So I'm going to pick up that largest size first. And I think I just used two sizes on this one. And I think I'm going to put two down here. I don't want to do it that or like that. I always overthink this part, y'all. I'll be real honest. Overthink where I'm putting no gems. And I may need to use more than th three, but let's try it. Okay, so now I've got this and I'm pressing it down over the dot. And sometimes it wants to hold on to it. But, you know, I'd much rather prefer adhesive back gems. Uh, but these look different. And you know what? I, my friend last night, we were talking and she said, but these are great for shaker cards. And the back side, can you see how shiny the back side of these are? Look how pretty that is. Isn't that so pretty? I mean, they're gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, I'm always fighting trying to get them out of here. Okay, now let me find my next size. I think it's this one. And put it right there. And you've got to get a tiny dot of glue. Do I want to go here or here? Okay, I need your help. Should I put the third one here or up here? Above the flower or above the thank you? I need for you to vote. Just want to know what you think. Should I put the third gem here above the flower? Or here above the thank you. Anyone? Under. Right here. Right here, Cindy. You're saying under right here. Above. <laughs> Look, y'all. <laughs> hey, Susan. May, I know. Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, so my gut tells me to put it here because if I put it up here, it's going to look like it's floating to me out in nowhere. Right here, it's kind of grounded by the flower. And so it's about half and half. It's half and half, y'all. Hi, Anna. Hi, Patty. Okay, I'm going to do this. It's half and half, so... I'll show you, you know, the other one. You'll so you get the idea what the what it looks like on top. But it's like my whole my positioning of my flower and everything on the first one was different. Okay, yeah. All right. Now let me show you. See, here I put it above. But you see how I had so much space right here? This thank you was much higher than this thank you. Okay, so that kind of made a difference. So either way is fine. But for this one, because of the way the spacing was, I think, I don't know. Probably either or y'all, either or. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, there's our card. Now, want to see some more cards? Okay. Let me show you a few more that I've made, if I can find them. Okay, this first one I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn my heater on. It's getting cold. Okay. This first one, right here, this was started to be this card. Okay. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Rita Maria. This one started to be this, but you see the brightness took, I wanted more subtle here. Okay, and so that's why I decided to go with So Saffron, although it's very close, but you can see the difference how this one is much brighter. Okay, so I went with the So Saffron and here I thought, well, I can't let that go to waste. And y'all, I already had the thank you stamped underneath there ready to go for the sample card. So I, what I did, you can always fix things, right? That's what I like to say. You can always fix it. So I die cut some flowers from the designer paper. I used the same square, but I used a full 
four and a quarter by 11, okay? I still have my border here. I stamp, I couldn't be happier to have you as my friend, which is beautiful, okay? And put that, pop that up with dimensionals. I use the yellow gems instead of the pink. And look at this, y'all. That is an amazing embossing folder. And it comes in a set of three. These are in the online exclusive as well. I can't talk. They're called Basics 3D Embossing Folders, which means to me you can use them with any stamp set or any, any suite of product, products that you have because they're just a general all-over pattern, okay? So we have these dots. Can you see that? I mean, it's a major, major dot. I love it. Then you have these little cross hatches. Okay, let me open this up. And they're thick, they're 3D. Okay, so they're the thick ones. Okay, and it comes three in a in a package. And then this one is a little starburst looking. I haven't used this one yet. See? Isn't that pretty? But this one is the dot. I love it. Okay. So there's that with the die cut flowers from the paper. Okay. Now let's see. This one was the first card I made once I got the suite. Here's that die cut border. It's just cut in basic white. I cut, I think that's a mm, three and a half inch piece of this designer paper. And then I die cut the flowers and the leaves from the designer paper. I stamped hello. This is done in a, I used a pair of pizzazz, even though that's not the color, it's the look I wanted. The soft sea foam was going to be too light. And then I used a yellow and two of the pink uh, gems on that. Okay. Again, that's a petal pink background. And then on the inside, I stamped, I couldn't be happier to have you as my friend. Okay. So that's another. And then this one is very simple, but I wanted to show you how, you know, it's stamps, ink, and paper with embellishments. And here's that ribbon I was talking about. You see how it's thicker and it has a big bump there? But that's okay. It's beautiful. It's a rich, rich ribbon. But this paper, I love it. Stamped and cut the hello. And then I used some of our iridescent pearls on this one. Okay. That's just y'all designer paper and instead of this i could have done a strip of petal pink cardstock okay all right do i have an insight on this i don't think i do yet no okay there's that now i have one more i went digging in my drawer of scraps of old in color cardstock and i found one piece of oops i'd be looking for that <laughs> One piece of Lost Lagoon, okay? And so I made it. So, but you could do the same with Evening Evergreen if you don't have Lost Lagoon, which you, I know you don't, okay? It's okay. And use these papers. This I stamped and embossed on white, okay? And then I um, colored it in with those, what do you call it? blender brush, blending brush, okay, on, this is soft sea foam on the leaves, and I use my Lost Lagoon here, which you could use your soft succulent or your pool party. This is pool party ribbon. You see how that goes with that? Pool party isn't even in this designer paper, but it's got that bluish green tint, and you can use it, and then I used the these uh, teal, which I, they're probably Lost Lagoon from that little, these little guys, okay? And this is a pocket card. And then it has just a little slip in there. And you could use it as a gift card holder, okay? I won't tie that back right now. Okay, so you see, do you see how irresistible this bundle is? I mean, it really is. It's beautiful. Let me get myself back up here. My goodness, I've gone almost an hour. 
it's okay, Rosalie. You can watch the replay. So I cannot believe I have gone almost an hour. Thank y'all for sticking with me if you did. Okay, thank you so much. But you see, y'all, it is beautiful. So beautiful. So uh, I encourage you to look at it. Take a look at it in the online store and all of the other things. I'll be back uh, sharing more from the online exclusives next week. I'm hoping to be doing some Easter things in combination with some of those new things that I'll have. And um, anyway, can't wait for you to join me. Uh, visit my website at inkandinspirations.com. Like I said, I'll have the details for this card up there tomorrow. You're welcome, Diane. Thank you, Rita Maria. Thank you for joining us. And, um, and, Okay, the details for this will be on the blog tomorrow, okay? Be sure you are on my email list. If you're not, you're not getting all the info, okay? So go to my blog, inkandinspirations.com, okay? There's a box on the right that just wants your name and email address. I promise I won't bombard you with emails. Just, you know, if I have to give you something or... I'm sharing once a week, or if there's something pressing, I think you need to know now, I'm going to send you an email. Okay. So thank you so much for doing that. And I'll see you again soon. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.